In this video, I'll demonstrate another approach to edge gilding using real gold leaf. My initial attempts at edge gilding were based on the instructions in John Mitchell's book on edge decoration. In John's book, he does an exhaustive survey of all the variations possible in edge gilding. In using the variations that are still in common use, I've found all of them to have positive aspects and little against them. So I'll continue this series demonstrating different approaches to edge gilding and in this video I'm going to use a technique that's based on a demonstration that John Mitchell gave at Standards of Excellence in 1995. One of the main aspects that can be varied in edge gilding is how the gold is stuck to the edge. There's various types of sizes and egg glares that can be used. John seems to favour a starch based size and that's what I'll use in this video and it's what I used when I initially started edge gilding because it's simple. John's recipe, which I'll put in the description below, makes up 175 millilitres of size. Mix one level teaspoon of highly refined wheat starch, I'm using laundry starch, with 25 millilitres of cold water and make that into a paste. Add 150 millilitres of boiling water, stirring as you add it, making up the 175 millilitres. Bring the solution just to the boil, either on the stove or in a microwave, and then let the size cool. Before I use the size, I always strain a small amount, the amount that I'm going to use in that session, through a fine cloth, such as a handkerchief. Of the three types of sizes that I've used, starch, PVA and gelatin, they all have in common that they're easy to prepare. While the size cools, I'll prepare the edge in the usual manner. So you can either guillotine the edge or plough it like I'm doing here. Edge preparation is everything in edge gilding. I'm using a very hard digital paper for this demonstration. I find it very difficult to prepare the edge of this paper, but I'll do my best. A medium hard cartridge paper would be ideal. However, I'm still looking for a supplier of such a paper that works well in digital printing. I'll fan out the edge of the book and rub talc into it to stop the pages sticking together. You have to use real talc. The modern talc substitutes such as corn flour when wetted would turn to paste and stick the pages together. Now I'm putting the text between wedge shaped gilding boards and putting it, lowering it into the press. I dress the top edge of the gilding boards with a wood plane every time I use them. I'll start using a cabinet scraper to smooth the edge. I'm going to scrape in the direction of the pages of course. Once I start preparing this edge I can't touch it anymore or the grease from my fingers will stop the gold sticking to the edge. I have a video on how to prepare or sharpen the card scraper. Once I've got rid of any minor defects with the cabinet scraper or card scraper, I'll do a final smooth with some very fine sandpaper. This is 320 grit, though 400 grit's probably better. Then I'll use my soft brush that I've reserved just for cleaning up after sanding and scraping. A little vacuum cleaner would be ideal. I'll strain enough size for this gilding session. I used to work somewhere that used these huge syringes to sample drinking water. They'd use them once and throw them away. I grabbed about a half dozen of them. They're really handy. I wish I'd grab more. The first thing I'm going to put on the edge is a layer of bowl. The way I'm going to do this is mix about an eighth of a teaspoon of bowl with a small amount of size. I'll mix that up so it's nice and wet. Then using a wrung out natural sponge, I'll wipe the bowl onto the edge. John demonstrates this differently. He uses a wad of cotton wool that's been dipped in the size and then he rubs that into the bowl powder and then wipes that on the edge. I find that I get lumps of bowl on the edge if I try and do that. Then using a soft brush that I keep just for this, I brush burnish the edge. 
Now I'm going to burnish the edge with the flat agate burnisher, but it has to be free of oil and grease and wax. So I'm going to clean it with lighter fluid. Now very lightly, I'm going to burnish the edge. I'm going to go back and forth four times, just pushing down the fibers that have swollen up from the application of the bowl. This is a very light burnish and I'm trying to keep the burnisher as flat as possible by not moving my hands and using my arms to hold the burnisher. I'm trying to avoid getting burnish marks on the edge. Using red bowl under the gold gives the edge a warmer glow. If you wanted a cooler looking edge, you'd use graphite under the gold. Now I'll apply the first layer of size to the edge. It's just a light coat. I worked the brush against the edge of the jar to get rid of any bubbles from the bristles. While the size dries, I'll prepare the gold. The other significant variation that I'm doing in this video is that I'm using hair or brush tips instead of paper tips. The brush tips are made of squirrel hair and John suggests that you could buy a squirrel tail from a fishing supply store and make your own tips. These are a little bit wide, just wider than the gold is ideal. At the start of a gilding session, I'll give everything a clean. I'll use some lighter fluid to clean the knife and the tips. I cleaned the cushion outside using a bit of pumice. I demonstrate that in the video where I make a gilder's cushion. Even though I'm going to add grease to the tips in a moment, I want a controlled amount of grease on the tips. So I want to start from clean tips each day. John goes to some length to explain why he thinks having too much grease on the tips is bad for your edges. I'm trying a different brand of gold at the moment. I would have preferred the double version of this gold, but the person that I bought it from didn't have it in stock. 23 or 23 and a half carat seems to be the sweet spot for gold for edges. Cut the gold into strips wide enough to cover the width of the edge. One of my pieces is too narrow and I had to redo it later. Ah, it's not sticking. I forgot to put grease on it. So I'll wipe the tips on my hair. Just do it a few times. I always work with the brand on the tip handle facing up. So I only put the grease on the one side of the tips. That works much better. One of the advantages of the brush tips over the paper tips is that you can see through the hair tips so you don't have to have that little bit of gold sticking over the edge so that you know where the gold is. I like using these brush tips, however paper tips are certainly a lot cheaper. The edge is dried so I'll put another layer of size on. Then I'll let that dry and then put another layer. So I'll put three layers of size on and then one final layer before laying down the gold. Getting sufficient but not too much moisture in the edge seems to be one of the magic steps in edge gilding. In my hot summer the three layers of size seems to work fairly well. Now I'll put the final layer of size on the edge and then quickly but not rushing place the gold on the edge with a slight overlap between pieces. Now you wait until the water in the size either evaporates or is absorbed so that there's no fluid underneath the gold. I normally wait about 10 minutes but you don't want the size to dry. 
Now set the gold using a clean dry wad of cotton wool. Just very gently press the gold onto the edge, wiping any moisture that you pick up onto your arm. If you pick the gold up off the edge, then you didn't wait long enough or you press too hard. We'll continue to set the gold by pushing it with the fleshy part of your thumb through some silicon coated baking paper just very gently being careful not to scratch the edge with your thumbnail. I then like to wait five minutes before the final step of setting the gold by very lightly burnishing through the silicon coated paper. However in John's demonstration he did this straight after setting the gold with his thumb. I'm using very light pressure and I'm going to go back and forth four times over the edge. Where the gold overlaps, the top layer of gold is not going to stick. So at some point that needs to be removed. So at some point during this stage, just wipe the overlapping areas with your finger and the top layer of gold will wipe off. If you don't remove that second layer of gold, later it can ball up and put a mark in the edge. So at this point the edge is still quite dull but you're starting to see a reflection. Now we let the edge dry. I normally wait at least 30 minutes, maybe an hour. Now that the edge is dried we'll start the final burnishing process. For this first burnish with the dog tooth burnisher I'm not going to use any beeswax. This will allow any defects that appear to be patched. Once wax is put on the edge, then defects can't be patched. Now I'm not going to demonstrate patching, but it's the same as the patching I did in the Gen Lindsay approach. Something I didn't do in that video was polish along the edge using a dog tooth burnisher like I'm doing now. At the time, I just hadn't worked out how to use the dog tooth burnisher on a flat edge. I did a lot of experimenting and practicing and I realized the issue was that I'd been applying too much pressure. In John Mitchell's demonstration he also used the dog tooth burnisher along the edge and watching that video I realized that I'd been applying too much pressure and maybe too long a stroke. After doing it once without wax and then patching any defects, go back and do it twice more, having put a layer of wax on beforehand. Never apply the wax directly. I always rub the wax into the palm of my hand and then rub my thumb into the palm of my hand and then rub my thumb along the edge, applying a very thin layer of wax. Work in sections about 25 millimeters or an inch long. Work your way across the edge and then move up, uh, slightly overlap each section. On each burnish you can apply slightly more pressure. The final burnish is using the flat agate burnisher across the edge. I'm finding that it's usually at this stage that if I'm going to put burnish marks in the edge, it's going to be now. Since I'm getting so successful at using the dog tooth burnisher, I'm wondering whether I should leave this step out. In John's video, he swaps to an agate burnisher that has a slightly curved edge. I know someone that has a burnisher like that, and I've found that it is less likely to leave burnish marks. I have found a supplier for this burnisher, but it's so expensive I'll probably need 100,000 subscribers before I can afford it. John Mitchell suggests that you just make your own. Hinge the gilding boards off so that you avoid cracking the gold on the edge and then tap the edge on the press to loosen the pages. I hope you've enjoyed this video and as always I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you can and would like to support me on Patreon, the details are in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Until next time, cheerio.